Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> I didn't even do anything yet. <laughs> okay, so please have a seat, everyone. And then uh, we can start. Um, I will introduce myself first. I'm Schaukje. I'm from the Netherlands. And um, last year I was a young talent, so I'm very honored and uh, excited to be here again. And this year as uh, an MC. Um, all right, we'll go to the first performance of this morning. And uh, you've all known him. He's from the Netherlands. He's a well-known musician here at CA. And uh, yeah, you've seen him probably perform. He, his name is Jan Willem van Delft. <laughs> and he's here with the CA band. And I'm going to give a quick shout out to everyone uh, with um, Michel Kramer on drums and Aaron De Leijse on bass, Tobias Kerkhoven on guitar, and Jonathan Rompel on the keyboard. Give them a warm welcome. So we, we just, uh, it's always a surprise actually for us all what, what we're going to play, um, like today. We didn't rehearse this again. But I mean, there are a lot of you who know this song because we sang it in at least the traditional churches in, in Holland. Uh, it's a song which is actually written with a, 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 um, um, by some uh, beautiful lady who is attending the CA right now, Karen Lefferty. And uh, we want to play this like in an easy jam. And maybe if you feel like you can sing along or hum along in your own language. The band just started humming. Op de bas.
So let's sing this chorus together. Hallelujah. Thanks to the humble heroes, Michiel, Aaron, Tobias, and Jonathan. Okay, great. Well, that was uh, some opening here. Uh, okay, our next performer, you have seen him already, I guess. Um, he has shown us some of his work, and he's from Scotland. He has lots of different skills, from bubbles to sand. Uh, and he can do it all. Just give a warm welcome to Philip Noble. Okay, hi everyone again. I was just thinking, 30 years ago, I wrote to Lane and said, do you have any workshops at Christian Artists on clowning? Because I am interested in that. And he wrote back saying, why don't you come and do a workshop on clowning? <laughs> and it was terrible. If you were there, you will remember. It was very poor. But what, what it was, was such an encouragement to me. And within about eight years, I'd written a book called Fool of the Kingdom, which is published in America. Don't buy it if you see it on Amazon. Get it secondhand. There's lots of copies around. Um, but the, the theme of that was basically the vulnerable lover. The clown is not the face. It's what's in the heart. And this is what I felt about Christian artists, what we're hearing for the first night. What it's about is long obedience in the same direction. Whatever you're following, just keep going down that line. And you'll find many things on both sides will happen. And then there will be breakthroughs, the highs and the lows but long obedience in the same direction. This is an introduction to a little um, example. I came home about 10 years ago, a bit over, and there was a message on the answer phone from a company in Spain, an advertising company, saying, we hear you know about string. Do you think you could make a car out of string? And my wife said, don't answer that. It's a hoax. It's not real. But being me, I answered it. It was real. It's a company in Barcelona who had been commissioned by Audi to make a car advert out of string games. They tried everywhere, and they couldn't find anyone who knew about string games enough. So I knew about how to make them with my fingers, and then for the next month I spent with my whole family making giant string figure shapes to try and make a car. And the result is we went to Prague and made a film for a week. My job was to teach the actors who were there, about 30 actors. I would teach one group to make one string figure, or maybe the wheel or the chair, another group to make another one. At the end of the weekend, they said, we want you to be in the actual advert. I said, no, I don't want to be. Yes, you are to be professor of string. So you'll see me a little bit younger as a professor of string in Audi, and I am obviously the guy who designed it. I designed the Audi A4, as you'll see. <laughs> People say, did you get a car from doing all this work? I got something better. I got a lot of good friends, and I've got an advert for me 
to show to you today. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Philip. All right, our next performer we will get to enjoy is from Greece. She is a violinist and uh, yeah, this is a really hard word for me. Uh, philologist, uh, but she also studied singing. 
She is specialized in the historical performance of early music and she loves nature and she finds the word of God as it is written in the Bible, the most powerful text there is she has ever read. She believes that people should often talk less. So that was, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, let's give a warm welcome to Anastasia Mil <laughs> Miliori. Yeah. <laughs> I will play for you three pieces from the Baroque era. Uh, one is, uh, the first is a fantasia from uh, Georg Philipp Telemann. And um, I have prepared a video. In the first part, the slow part, there will be some pictures from uh, nature, so Greek nature, islands and uh, that stuff. In the second part, the, the fast part, uh, there is a dance uh, performance from a student of mine. She's only 16 and she did uh, herself this choreography as a gift to me. Um, and then again, uh, some nature. So I hope you will enjoy it. Oh, I would like to say that I'm playing with a historical violin. Is, is, it's made as it was uh, supposed to be made in the 17th century, and it has darm uh, gut strings, and a very different bow, and a dev very different construction. If you want to see it afterwards, you're welcome. <laughs>
I would like to invite my friend Thorsten to do the next piece together. The next piece is a folia. It's a musical theme from um, Portugal. Um, but maybe it's also come uh, from uh, West Africa because in the 15th century there were uh, slaves important, imported in Portugal from uh, West Africa. So maybe this uh, folia, this musical theme has a West African origin or maybe Arabian. It is a theme which is uh, variated many, many times. Last thing, we tune um, for this music, we tune in the frequency of uh, 415. Yeah. That's why we tune that much. <laughs>
have a little time or I will run out of time. Do we? Yes. One short piece. I will call my friend Vive uh, to improvise with me a very short piece, a piece from a Pasakaya, um, which is Baroque piece, but Vive will improvise with some, uh, with, with whatever comes in her mind. She's very good at that. <laughs> She's a singer. We're on the magic. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. All right. The next performer we are going to see is from the UK. And uh, he took uh, up mime after uh, studying um, philosophy and theology at university. Uh, he still believes words are necessary, but that silence is often a better way. He performed professionally for 18 years with full-length shows um, uh, that toured around churches, art centers, and small-scale uh, theaters. Um, 
he has written two books and now he teaches preaching in theology, theological school, college. <laughs> so hard to talk, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, he comes out of retirement, but only for friends and CA, of course. We are happy to welcome Jeffrey Stevenson. Good morning. Wonderful to be back at uh, CA and uh, privileged to present uh, just uh, two of uh, my classic um, pieces, classic um, mime uh, with sound effect, um, noisy mime. Um, this is a, uh, by way of um, saying that uh, I also uh, require, mime requires the uh, involvement of the audience. Now, don't worry. I'm not going to ask anybody to come up on stage and embarrass them, if you're good. But I need your involvement your, of your um, imagination. So this first piece um, is a very appropriate. It's, called, it's the elixir of youth. It's about uh, growing old or maybe not growing old. I think that's very appropriate for some of us at uh, CA. And uh, I ask your involvement because in this piece, um, it is a kind of homage to the hammer horror genre. Um, and uh, so you have to imagine with me that we are not in, on a balmy summer's day in the middle of Holland, but we are in the wild uh, trackless wastes of Transylvania, and the wind is, is, is blowing, and the lightning is flashing, and the thunder is crashing. I wonder if you could help me out with this bit. This is your involvement as well. So I need wind, and thunder, and lightning, and crashing, and, and uh, that's pathetic, really. Maestro, give me a little bit of help on this. And the, and the wind is, is blowing, and, and, the, and the clouds are scudding across the sky. <laughs> And the wonder is crashing, and the wolves are howling. Oh. Oh. And the clouds reveal a, a full moon, which shines on a castle in the distance. And the top of the castle is a tower, and at the top of the tower is a window. And in the window is a light, which suddenly goes out and has nothing to do with the plot. Because deep within the castle, is the brilliant but deranged scientist, the twisted genius who is growing old. Shh. 
she goes, zwang, 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 zwang. Ribbit, ribbit. Thank you very much, thank you very much. And to finish a, uh, an even older piece, but one which uh, speaks of, of new life, and it's simply called Creation. Yeah! <laughs> 
Thank you for that wonderful performance. All right. Then uh, up next, um, we have a spe very special uh, last one before we go to Lane, of course. Uh, the last performer of this uh, morning uh, is a singer-songwriter from England, but she lives in uh, France now. Her style is a mix of pop, jazz, and electric. 
and uh, she one of her songs she will perform. She also performed at a television program called The Voice. You may have heard of it. Um, yesterday I asked her what was her what if, what was a big moment for her in her music career, and um, after some thinking, she told me it was like the first time she uh, participated at CA uh, when she was a participant in uh, Thornton's uh, uh, yeah Th Thornton's workshop, uh, and um, he uh, he told her to join on stage that evening, so uh, she improvised that evening all her vocals on stage and uh, on the spot. So, and she really, she really loved it. And uh, I think it's beautiful that she's here again. Um, give a warm welcome, give it up for Hannah Featherstone. I had this situation where I had, a, I had to do a concert and I have, oh, okay, you do that. Yeah, maybe, uh, well, I'm a drama teacher, so, <laughs> drama. Um, maybe we could all stand up for a second, because we're sitting a long time now. Yeah, stand up, stand up. And uh, this is called uh, a clap game, because when I, whenever I clap, you guys should clap too, so make sure you can see me. And if you're not, then you're, uh, you have to sit down. Ready? Okay. So yeah, I'm going to be playing a few brand new songs that I have actually not played before. So this is why I am dependent on this, uh, this thing here. Um, uh, and the first one I'm going to do is called Heart of Gold. Um, as I was preparing to uh, get onto a massive national TV channel out of my, completely out of my comfort zone, I had these lines that came to mind and I wrote a song about it. Chasing diamonds in fantasy, they shimmer over the veil. Dainty embroidery, like a dream. When all the fakery faces reality, the layers tumble. Now I can see crystal clear. It's not all that you have that will capture the ground is the heart you treasure faithfully it's not all that you have not the tricks nor the charm it's the gold you hold eternally our true desires our identity are hidden under our skin and wrapped in flawless hypocrisy squeaky clean when all the vanity Oh, 
But you have not the tricks nor the charms The gold you hold eternally to invite Torsten Harde. Torsten Harde on stage. Would you like to tune? Is this the idea? Be 
were in the right key for tuning. Is it communal tuning? Is that the idea? What? You're asking them if it's as good? Yes. Okay. going to play two songs back to back. Um, the first one was um, when I met uh, a man in Paris, in the streets of Paris. Um, he was homeless and um, we spent a few, a few minutes talking, quite a, quite a long time talking. And he said that he had, he couldn't move anymore. Um, and so I got to try to understand what his story was and he, he basically said he'd lost his daughter and so he didn't know why or how he was supposed to move. Um, and um, after quite a few, yeah, an hour or so, we, he said, oh, there's a, well, it's at the beginning of the conversation he said, there's um, a river over there and there's sun that is hitting the water. I would love to go over there, but I can't. Um, and it only took a while where he just put his bottle aside and said, okay, let's walk there. And so I walked there halfway with him. Don't know if he got to the other side, but he said, I want to finish aloud. So I left him with that. Um, and he, he, he told me the, the name that he was given when he was a kid that he was very fond of, which was Le Petit Pellegrino. So I have written a song called Pellegrino's Walk that I want to play with Torsten. A cloud has risen over me and left me in a haze. The wind has swept along its way, the sweet, sweet child of mine. And all within me coils and stings I
Friends, before I forget some announcements. Tomorrow <coughs> we have a closing ceremony that is at nine o'clock and it will be in this hall in the last part. So they will close a, a, a wall there and it will be there. And you are all invited to be there and join us. Um, there are three person visitors who come from very far, far away, from Mongolia. <laughs> Where are the three sisters from Mongolia? Can they stand up? Where are they? Oh, I cannot see them. Anyway, they are there. <clears throat> and that is, of course, very unusual. It took a lot of <laughs> effort to get the visa arranged for them. So uh, it's amazing that in Mongolia is a group of uh, new Christians who are in the arts and want to do great for God. I think we should be very kind to them and welcome them and embrace them. It is a real other world. And <clears throat> the gospel choir, so the lunch concert is not in the castle, but it will be here uh, just across uh, in the uh, dining room there. So you will hear them anyway, 12.45, lunch concert starts there. It is followed at one o'clock by um, talent evaluation. I want to close with the text of today. I will read it to you. <coughs> it's from 1 Corinthians. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. And that's an interesting thought. And we all have been in meetings where there was loads of talk. 
I think you can agree with me that it was no help because we all shut down after a couple of minutes, as you will be with me when I talk too long, which is okay to me, by the way. Shut him down. Not shoot him down, that's something else. <laughs> and where the Bible is talking about of that power has an equivalent in the arts. A form of art has an incredible power. So when people open up their hearts for the arts, there's an incredible power in the arts. And just to think loud, how great would it be when your art form is filled with then the power of God? It doubles. Something to think about. Can the power of God be integrated in the power of your art. Maybe it can only touch one person, but that is already worthwhile to do so. The point is not, will we have big audiences? The point is, can we transmit through the power of the arts, the power of God? Another verse from Ephesians, I pray <coughs> that out, out of his glorious riches, He may strengthen you with the power through the spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. It's speaking about something glorious. God is not our enemy. God is not a person full of wrath who hates us. There are Christians who think so. They are so afraid of God. God is not our enemy. God is glorious, a glorious being. And he wants to see his glorious presence, his Shekinah, in all of us. And that is the riches. That will make you rich. That will give you an incredible motivation to go on. If you ask me, what is my motivation? For all those years, I'm now professional in the arts, I'm a cultural entrepreneur, and I've done hundreds and hundreds of innovating projects. My motivation was this. I like to see that glorious God, through all those projects, that people will really see how he is. It was never about me. Never. It is all about our purpose. And I believe that will help us. When CA comes to an end, we have to make a countdown. Was it all worth? All those days, all those nights, all those troubles, Well, you think it's easy, you have good meals, you have a bed. But what about all the troubles when we normally start the 1st of September with work on CA and our work uh, is closing down three days before every CA? All those time, all the, the problems is finances to get it all paid. You may think, okay, I paid my part and it's all okay. Well. Every year we have to find 15,000 euro to play even. That's another search for little pockets of money here and there, such and so. I had to talk to people, to boards, to whatever. And finally, we always got it together. And I'm thankful for that. It was worth the price. It was so worth to see in glimpses of eyes of young people that they were inspired. It was worth everything. And I hope that you will take that home. One young person you may inspire, that is the future. That is God's kingdom among us. God bless you.